Swami Vivekananda and welcome. This is a very, very special workshop in this school. This uh, workshop is going to be a lot of action, so we'll be moving a lot. The man who taught me this chiropractic learned it in a city which today is a part of Turkey, on the European part of Turkey. In that time it was a part of Greece, in the days when this teaching was taken. And according to his witness, the texts, the textbooks which were used for some of these treatments were sometimes coming as far as from Armenia, and Syria. So it's a Middle Eastern method of treatment to a large extent, which again was <coughs> existing at, on the eastern outskirts of Europe. Therefore, this method unfortunately does not have any known textbook. It's a method which is, to the best of my knowledge, lost. This is not typically the kind of chiropractic which you learn in the Chiropractic Institute of um, Canada or of England or which one, which other of those types are. It doesn't say it is worse or weaker. On the contrary, I have spoken with chiropractors practicing in the West. I have seen their methodology and I have seen them practicing and their methods seem to be extremely weak compared to this form of chiropractic, which is very bold, which is very, very powerful. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my own personal history and the history of my teacher, so you understand what I have seen and what I have witnessed through this method. This mysterious Father Eleftherios um, was born somewhere uh, before the turn of the century. Uh, he was born around the year 1900, and he started being trained in this medical science around the age of 12 or 13. He went into this medical institute for the full education sent by his parents to become a doctor. This form of medicine is not acknowledged today because it has disappeared. In 1917, he had been promoted, he had been licensed as a doctor. He, I met him in 1987, which means that he had practiced this medical science, not trained, practiced it for 70 years. His experience was absolutely gigantic. I have seldom seen a person to understand the human body so well. Moreover, the advantage uh, or uh, the Additional advantage was this uh, old monk was a very spiritual person. He was very pure. He was very powerful. He had a great belief. He was very strong in his belief. And on top of everything else, he was born in the astrological sign of the Sagittarius, which gave him a very good Manipura. In yoga, Manipura is known as being the key chakra for understanding the human body. That is why those of you who have a strong Manipura or who will work on Manipura will be better than the others at this method. Those of you who have no Manipura, and I hope those of you who are new here, you know what that means, if not ask in a break. Your colleagues, you have the chakra presentations there as well. This is something which we use in yoga, and I'm trying to teach this thing from a yogic perspective. Uh, end of parenthesis. Those of you who have not much Manipura will be shy. This method is a bold, fearless method. It doesn't have to be reckless or crazy, but it is a bold method. If you are afraid to climb with your feet on the back of somebody, you won't do it and the person won't be healed. You need to have a certain kind of Manipura strength to have the boldness to push things to the limit. I'm trying to find a vertebra, which are, of course, exactly like valley and hill, valley and hill, <coughs> when you go vertically, that is. So I'm trying to find a vertebra, and then I'm poking on the vertebra and in the space between the vertebra, and on the vertebra and in the space between the vertebra. The spine is like a couple of centimeters gone to the left here. So with my mind, I always aim to go along this imaginary line of the spine. I'm going to start from here. It is useless 
it is useless to start lower than here. Here we have the sacrum, at the lower lumbar area and the sacrum, and those require another method. So I'm starting from the lower vertebras, and I'll go up till here. It's useless to go to the neck, that requires another method. When I was taught this, I was taught that this, uh, there are five tendons which are going on each side of the head, five tendons which go, one of them going to the shoulder, one of them going lower and so on, five of them, and these five tendons, they can be out of position. This is the famous story when you sleep, and you sleep in a wrong way, and you wake up in the morning and you are like this, and oh, you can't move, and your neck is tw twisting it in one part, it's an agony. That usually would be a tendon having moved out of position. It's not really a vertebra. That's why this technique works on the vertebras. It is excellent for spondylitis and things like this because it breaks the small deposits of calcium and that makes a horrible noise and that is very spectacular. But actually the effect is not in very profound in moving the vertebras because the movement is a twisting. So when you twist, you don't move them really. You don't press them forward, backward, sideways. It's just a twisting. So basically this is more like stretching and it eliminates the calcium deposits, which is very good, breaks the little calcium deposits, and it stretches those five tendons. That is why, for example, it contributes to some headaches. People who have headaches on the side of the head, sometimes when you do this, suddenly the headache disappears. This can eliminate a headache instantaneously. Not all the headaches, though there are headaches which come from here, there are headaches which come from here, which are not eliminated, and some of them from here. But most of the headaches in the back of the head and on the side, they, you have a very good chance of dealing with this. Actually, many people are tensed, irritable, have headaches and so on, because this area is becoming very ankylosed, very stiff. And then relieving it is one of the easy things. I remember... Uh, the old Eleftherius called this movement twisting the head, uh, which again, it may be in my native language, has a bit of a more rude meaning, like really twisting the head, screwing the head. And then he had another method, which was called breaking the nerve. It's something, <laughs> breaking a nerve. And then he had another method, which was called pulling the forehead. And then some, many people were coming, and many were ankylosed here because of the sedentary lifestyles. And then uh, they were all pissing in their pants when Eleftherios would point them to me and said, twist their head, break their nerve, and pull their forehead. <laughs> and these guys were in for a trip, you know, then they, oh boy, what is this guy going to do?